Hello, everyone. My name is Zheng Min. You can call me Spark. My research mainly focuses on operating system and mobile application security. I got my PhD degree from the COHK. Currently, I'm a senior security expert at Ant Group. Other authors of this paper are Bai Xiaolong, Zhou Yajin, Zhang Chao, Lei Tao, and Qu Fuping. It's a great honor to present our work at NDSS. The title of our paper is Pop and Push, Demystifying and Defending Against Markport-Oriented Programming. OK, let me start our presentation. In general, jailbreaking means breaking the device out of its jail. The goal of a successful jailbreaking is getting full control of the device. Apple devices are most famous jail device among the world. iOS, iPad OS, and Mac OS are operating systems developed by Apple and used in Apple devices. All Apple devices deploy a same hybrid kernel structure called XNU. There are cases that kernel vulnerabilities have been used to escalate the privilege and get full control of the system. However, Apple has deployed multiple security mechanisms that make the exploitation of the device hard. For instance, with the deployment of CFI, hijacking the control flow becomes hard. However, attackers have abused a special type of kernel object to bypass these mitigations. So a new kind of attack is proposed. According to public exploits, for example, Yalu and AsyncWeek, we summarize a kind of attacks that leverage mark ports to achieve arbitrary kernel memory manipulation. We call it mark port oriented programming. The main goal of the POP attack is to manipulate kernel memory content and layout, even in case that multiple mitigations are deployed on the system. Note that our attack assumes an existence of a memory corruption vulnerability that could be used to corrupt a kernel object. This is a fair assumption since such vulnerabilities are common nowadays. POP escalates an attacker's capability from a limited memory corruption to arbitrary kernel memory manipulation. After that, further attackers could be launched. Before we talk about POP attack, let me briefly introduce MarkPort. A MarkPort in XNU is a kernel-controlled communication channel. It provides basic operations to pass messages between threads. Ports are used to represent resources, services, and facilities like hosts, tasks, threads, and memory objects. In user space, a mark port name is an integer number representing a handler for a mark port in the kernel space. In the kernel, a mark port is represented by a pointer to an IPC port object. So the first step of POP attack is using a memory corruption vulnerability to gain a single write to a fake IPC port object. For instance, here is a bug in Mark Vulture extract attribute recipe trap function. The function first copies four bytes from the user space pointer to the SZ variable. After that, it calls keylog to allocate a heap buffer. The function then calls copy in to copy a very large sized data from the user space to the kernel heap buffer, which will cause a buffer overflow. In order to get a send write to a fake port, the exploit first sends lots of mark messages with dead ports. It then uses the bug to overflow a dead port pointer and make it point to a fake IPC port object in user space. After receiving the mark messages, the attacker will gain a valid send write to the fake IPC port object, whose fields can be controlled by the attacker. So here is an example flaw of the POP attack. The attack first corrupts an IPC port or kernel object through kernel bugs. By issuing mark system calls and counterfeiting IPC port objects, attackers can achieve lots of attack primitives. 
For instance, PID for task is such a system call which returns the PID number corresponding to a particular mark task. However, the function does not check the validity of the task object and directly returns the value of the PID of the task's BSD info to user space. Therefore, by carefully adjusting the offsets in a fake task structure, it is possible to convert this system call into an arbitrary kernel memory read primitive. To help readers better understand POP, we classify primitives used in the POP attack according to their behavior. QP is used to break the randomization-based mitigation and help the attacker to find the handler of the corrupted port in kernel without crashing the system. RP and WP helps attackers to gain partial or arbitrary kernel memory read and write capability. PPP help attackers to enlarge the attack surface or even control the whole system after obtaining a send write to privileged ports. After obtaining arbitrary kernel memory manipulation capabilities, the attacker can achieve other attack primitives. To mitigate the POT attack, we propose a framework called Port Auto Shield on macOS. Here is the system design of the push framework. POP primitive searcher is a tool to automatically locate potential POP primitives. Push policy generator is a framework to generate push policy rules to enforce the integrity of MacPort objects. And the push check is a kernel extension to deploy push examiners. To better describe a POP functionality, we use a primitive model de to define a primitive. In particular, the primitive model is used to define a possible attacking behavior based on the code sequence with specific kernel object and code patterns. The syntax of primitive model is based on the AST. The searcher takes labels, patterns, and objects as the input and outputs mark system call entries for user space program to invoke and mark port objects to be processed proceed in the primitive, processed in the primitive. Here is the methodology of our searcher. The searcher analyzes the XNU source code to generate a list of POP entries. Then it generates markport oriented control flow graph for each entry. Through the graph, we can figure out kernel functions that will be executed by a mark system call, as well as markport objects that are affected during the execution. For each pass, POP primitive searcher classifies the code pass based on primitive models. If the pass has expected mark port objects and matches the code pattern, the, uh, the POP primitive searcher will mark it as potential primitive. In our experiment, our searcher detected 713 potential POP primitives in XNU source code. Based on the result of POP primitive searcher, POP policy generator knows the mark port objects that need to be protected as well as system call names. Moreover, it will select related examiner to protect these objects. However, Examiners themselves need to be developed manually. Currently, four examiners were implement, were implement uh, to check the integrity of MacPort objects. For example, here is an implementation of object data examiner for PID for task system call. This, this system call should only return a valid PID number of the current process, but attackers build a fake task object to gain an arbitrary kernel memory read primitive. To mitigate such an attack, our examiner checks the validity of the PID value when the system call is being invoked. In order to hook target system calls, 
push needs to find a reliable code paths that the examiners could be executed. Unfortunately, the chaos and the uh, MAC system in XNU kernel cannot be used by our system. The reason is chaos operating set is very limited. MAC framework is private and can only be used by Apple. To solve these issues, we propose Push Checker, a kernel extension with dynamic, dynamically deploys, which dynamically deploys push policy rules through code inst instrumentation technique. To evaluate the effectiveness of our system, we collected, we collected 11 kernel vulnerabilities and 18 public exploits. The exploit result shows uh, push provides deterministic protection for every vulnerability and blocks each attempt to exploit the system. Note that we proposed and implement push before the releasing of virtual swap and OOB time step exploits. This demonstrates the effectiveness of our system to block new exploits. To evaluate the overhead induced by push, we run several benchmark programs. In general, the system only has an average of two overhead for benchmark programs. The push system has been deployed in Alibaba Group with more than 40,000 Mac OS devices. It successfully detected two mutated exploits and one new exploit. The new exploit is used in an email phishing attack. Specifically, the attacker sends a phishing email with a malicious app as the attachment. The app downloads a real PDF file and an attack payload. <coughs> the attack payload uses a zero-day memory corruption vulnerability in the graphic kernel driver to escalate its privilege and leaves a, pers a persistent backdoor with root privilege in the system. Because the attack payload uses POP primitives to gain kernel memory read and write capability and change its permission, it was detected by the push system. We have reported this vulnerability to Apple, and this flaw was fixed in macOS Big Sur 11.1 .1 with a CVE number. So here is the limitation of our system. First, our work only focuses on the MacPort kernel object. However, however, there may exist other similar kernel objects that could be exploited. In addition, due to the search complexity, the POP primitive searcher only focuses on code paths code pass that contain a MacPort related object. It may miss some kernel object and functions. Third, push can't mitigate all kinds of POP primitives. For example, push does not intend to prevent the arbitrary code execution primitive because it's not a necessary step to launch the POP attack in the first place. Also, we cannot prove that the, that the system can block every new attack. Fortunately, push supports extensible policy rules with examiners to prevent new threats in the first place. Here is a conclusion. First, we summarize a new attack called POP that leverage multiple MacPort kernel objects to bypass existing mitigations. Secondly, a defense mechanism called push is proposed to protect the integrity of MacPort objects in the XNU kernel with small performance overhead. Third, the push system has been deployed in a leading company. The evaluation of public exploits and one zero day exploit demonstrate the effectiveness of our proposed system. Okay, that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your listening.